हेलो पीपल इन दिस वीडियो वी आर लुकिंग एट प्लास्टर ऑफ पैरिस पीओपी सो बेसिकली ऑर्थोपेडिक्स हैज इवॉल्व यू नो फ्रॉम पीओपी इनटू सो मेनी कॉम्प्लिकेटेड सर्जरीज सो यू नो हाउ द सर्जरीज आर टुडे इन ऑर्थोपेडिक्स सो इन फ्रैक्चर मैनेजमेंट गाइस यू हैव फेज 1 व्हिच इज इमरजेंसी केयर फेज 2 व्हिच इज डेफिनेटिव केयर एंड फेज 3 इज द रिहैबिलिटेशन सो इन फेज 2 व्हिच इज द डेफिनेटिव केयर देयर इज वन स्टेप दैट इज द इमोबिलाइजेशन सो दिस इज वेयर प्लास्टर ऑफ पैरिस कम्स सो व्हाट इज द होल पॉइंट यू वांट टू इमोबिलाइज द uh part right so you are putting a pop cast so what are you using cast which cast pop is the material so what are you trying to achieve immobilization of the fractured uh, limb okay so basically people even if it is a open wound still you can uh, use a ca a pop cast for immobilization now let us say there was a wound here okay so you leave a window there so that you can still do the wound care okay that is also possible that you have a cast even for a open fracture and if it's a moderate size wound you can leave a window what is this a window a window in the cast so that you can um do wound care okay so is cast um, immobilization the only way of immobilization no there are a lot of ways of immobilization and especially the non operative ones they're talking about here like you can use a strap or you can use a sling this one is cast immobilization and this one finally is the functional bracing look at this plastic brace is used for a sticky fracture of the tibia the patient is up and about can put on shoes and go to work so this is a plastic brace okay so i think pop is something like uh, the problem with it is you put it once and you cannot remove it and put it on etc but all these other things to me seem to be like something that you can remove and use like this one this one and this one right but this one looks like a, what you say as a permanent thing right what do you say people how is it going what are we looking at immobilization techniques very good very good people so now let us go into details about this cast immobilization this is the most common method of immobilization remember that is why in exam also they are asking right so it has been used for a long time i'm sure this you can you also will say okay nowadays what they are saying is fiberglass casting tapes have become more popular i think they are more lightweight and they are radio lucent cast Uh, they are durable i think this is more expensive the fiber glass one okay let's look at a photo for that one also fiber glass casting tapes look at this people above is plaster of paris but look at what is down okay this one is fiber glass casting tape this is more popular it is durable lightweight even radio lucent this side you know it's radio lucent and actually it looks also very uh, you know uh, it looks a little more sleek thin what do you say right but i think it's expensive I would still go with plaster of Paris if, if, if you are going to wear something that's permanent. But if it's that radio lucent part, you can still spend on it. I feel if you're going to go for a lot of X-rays, what do you say, people? Guys, now let us look at what exactly plaster of Paris is. It's also called as gypsum salt. It is calcium sulfate. What is it? Calcium sulfate, half water. Interesting. Half water in dry form, which becomes CaSO4, two H two on wetting. oh it becomes 2h2 on wetting okay this conversion is an exothermic reaction and is irreversible you can't get back the powder once you mix it with water you can't get back the powder it's an irreversible reaction it's exothermic so it is giving going to give out a lot of heat the plaster sets in the given shape on drying yeah so it will come to shape that you want once it dries The setting time of a plaster varies with its quality, temperature of the water. Names of some of the plaster cast commonly used they have given in the table. Anyways, before that, just look at what they are saying here in the same paragraph. They are saying that once it dries, it will pick, it will take the shape, right? Whatever you have set it to. Basically, the setting time varies from the quality of the mixture and the temperature of the water. Okay, uh, some of the common plaster names. Look at this. Okay, it is going from head to toe kind of a thing. I feel. or some the order is there at least look at this basically cervical spine disease scoliosis shoulder immobilization humerus cole's fracture means somewhere here then femur then patella then tibia so by based on this uh, they are talking about these uh, names of the plaster cast which are commonly used which are the names <coughs> minerva cast rice cast turnbuckle cast shoulder spica shoulder shoulder spica u slab for the humerus hanging cast for the humerus cole's cast for cole's fracture hip spica for the femur hip hip spica cylinder cast for patella ptb cast for tibia look at some photos guys here minerva cast for the cervical spine disease 
riser cast for scoliosis so here you can see they have tried to correct scoliosis turn buckle cast for again for scoliosis shoulder spica see this actually spica is some specific word it means to say a uh, spica is a cast where a limb and a part of the trunk are included a limb and the part of the trunk are included hip spica can be there shoulder spica can be there so what do you mean by spica can you say spica spica yeah spica is a cast can you say it is a cast it is a cast where a limb a limb and a part of the trunk a part of a trunk are included are included yeah Okay, what is this U slab? Whenever the humerus is fractured, Cole's cast, Cole's fracture, guys. Hip spica. Just now we told you where you are going to include a limb and a part of the trunk. Hip spica, fracture of femur. Okay, where is femur? Here. Femur, 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 femur. Hip spica. Leg cylinder cast. For fracture of patella, it seems. Look at this leg cylinder cast. It looks like a cylinder, and they are including the patella, is it? Yeah, patella is somewhere here. Fracture of patella. See, patella is such a small bone, but the fracture cast is so huge. PTB cast, patella tendon bearing cast, patella tendon bearing cast. This is used for fracture of tibia. See tibia. So that time they are using the patella tendon bearing cast. Nice guys. So how many types of casts are there? Now let us look at more details. We are looking at uh, POP, plaster of Paris case. Look at this. There are types of plaster bandages. One is where, sorry, look at this. You are impregnating the rolls of starched cotton bandages with the plaster powder. Okay. Uh, so you have roll of cotton bandage. You will impregnate them with the plaster powder. The other one is there are ready-made bandages, which are uh, like a proprietary bandage. I think this is all like branded items. Okay. Uh, now let us move on. Use of plaster of Paris. Look at this, guys. There is slab or a cast. Okay. Now see, slab is something like it covers only a part of the circumference of the limb. It is made by unrolling a plaster bandage to and fro on the table. Not sure if this is the photo, guys. Guys, but what it says is you are going to cover only a part of the circumference of the limb. Okay, so basically it is used to immobilize soft tissue injury and basically to reinforce a uh, plastic cast. So I have a feeling it uh, it is going along with a cast. It can be along with a cast. So now you know what a cast is. It will cover the whole circumference of the limb. Okay, and thickness varies with the type of fracture and part of the body on which it is applied. So, did you understand, guys? Now, let's move on. Fundamental principles to be remembered while applying a plaster cast: you have to immobilize the joint above and below the fracture. Very important, guys. You focus. So, you are, if there is a fracture like this, you will have to immobilize the joint which is above, which is the hip joint here, and also the knee joint, right? You want to immobilize the entire thing. So, this is one of the fundamental principles. But there are exceptions, like in terms of Cole's fracture. Okay, look at this. You are not uh, immobilizing the elbow. You are going to immobilize only the wrist, right? This is a Cole's cast. Look at this. The elbow, they didn't do anything, right? The second point here is immobilize joints in a functional position. You are going to uh, immobilize it. You cast it in such a in a functional position. Okay? It should be it should be more natural. But there are exceptions. Again, in this Cole's uh, fracture, the immobilization, <coughs> okay, is not in the functional position. Look like see. Also, the wrist is not immobilized in the functional position. It is wrist is immobilized, yes, but it is not wrist immobilized in the functional position. Okay, the third function uh, fundamental principle is pad the limb adequately, especially on bony prominences. So you are going to pad the limb. Okay, so you are going to pad it enough. You are going to pad it enough on the bony prominences. Why? Why do you want to do that? If there is any bony prominence, you should give enough padding. That's more like some shock absorber, is it? Why is the padding? Let's now let's move on to the aftercare of plaster so basically um if there's any crack in the plaster uh, you should notice it you should avoid wetting the plaster graduated weight bearing for lower limb fractures so you should be careful about weight weight bearing exercising the muscles within the plaster and moving the joints not in the plaster 
is essential towards recovery. So you should move the joints which are not in the plaster. Did you get that? You should not move the joints which are in the plaster. You should move the joints which are not in the plaster and you should exercise the muscles within the plaster. So whatever is there within the plaster, those muscles you will exercise. Can you say exercise? Exercise. The muscles. The muscles. In the plaster. In the plaster. Yeah. And guys, don't uh, move the joints which is in the plaster, but you can move the joints which is not in the plaster. Okay. So you, sh you should notice if there are any cracks in the plaster, avoid getting it wet and you should do gradual weight bearing. Suddenly you should not. Graduated weight bearing you should do. Sudden weight bearing you should not do looks like. Okay. Then uh, you should exercise the muscles within the plaster and you should move the joints which are not in the plaster. Okay. Complications of plaster management guys. Look at this. Uh, following other uh, complications. Impairment of circulation. If they put a tight cast there will be impairment of circulation and there can be plaster sores also. Okay. Now what happens if there is impairment of uh, circulation? Tight cast. Look at this. Disastrous complication of plaster cast. X-ray of a child with rather simple fracture. Ischemic and deformed foot due to tight plaster. How sad. What are the two complications of uh, plaster? Can you tell me? See. Impairment. Impairment. Of circulation. Of circulation. circulation. And plaster source. Plaster. Plaster. Source. Source. Yeah. Source. Okay, now let's move on. Impairment of circulation, tight cast. So here they're explaining each one. Let's look at this. A plaster cast is a closed compartment. Hematoma and tissue edema following a fracture can result in increased pressure. So basically, now you are injured inside, right? So there's a fracture, let's say, of this. So what happens here? You have an injury. There can be blood accumulation. Hematoma can happen, right? Or there can be tissue edema, which is here. Edema, 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 right? which can result in increased pressure. So, if you have already put a cast and uh, there is the edema inside and hematoma inside, there will be increased pressure inside this cast. Okay, it will lead to impaired circulation in the extremity. Early diagnosis by a high induction of index of suspicion can prevent disastrous complications like gangrene. So, what will happen if you are putting a tight cast? It can go into gangrene. Unrelenting pain, especially stretch pain, swelling over the fingers, right so look at this swelling over the fingers so you are able to see those parts right inability to move the fingers hypoesthesia that means they are not feeling that much bluish discoloration of the digits are see are the signs of tight cast so bluish discoloration of the digits so there is ischemia basically guys inability to move the fingers hypoesthesia all these right swelling over the fingers stretch pain so, what will it lead to finally? It will lead to gangrene. Okay. A tight cast can be prevented by adequately padding the cast and elevating the extremity for first two to three days following the cast application. This makes sense. Let's focus here. How is it going? See, look at this. Once the cast is applied, you, first of all, cast you should apply in such a way that there is, it's not too tight, right? And then what you should do, that person, let's say this guy's leg they have put a cast here what you should do you should elevate the limb so what will happen all the fluid will return to the body so fluid will not accumulate there and it will not cause the tightness okay so what are they saying here how will you prevent by padding okay padding the cast you should adequately pad the cast okay and this will uh, and you will elevate the extremity okay so now can you tell me what and all are the signs of tight cast the signs of tight cast are, now let's say this is these are the toes or whatever, uh, inability to move these fingers, uh, swollen fingers and bluish discoloration, hypoesthesia of these, they cannot feel much here. Then the stretch pain kind of a thing, they have stretch pain. Then what else did they say? That's it, right? These are the, uh, the signs of tight cast. What will tight, tight cast lead to? It will lead to impaired circulation and then it can lead to gangrene. It is a disastrous complication. Okay, one more complication was there, no guys, of uh, plaster. What are the two uh, complications? One is, um, um, what is this? I'm sorry, I forgot to say ischemia and all that because of tight uh, cast and one more is sore. Okay, so what is the sore? S-O-R-E sore. So what will happen uh, inside this um, uh, plaster, isn't it? Because of inadequate padding, irregularity of the sur inner surface, foreign body is there inside the plaster. Because of all these, these are the causes. 
so there is let's say there's some foreign body inside okay well, that is easier to understand let's go with that there's some foreign body inside inside okay so what will happen there will be a sore there one small uh, sore will form see here that sore means i'm feeling sore it's not the pain they're talking about something that is forming there okay a sore formation within a plaster cast okay so some kind of an ulcer some kind of an uh, uh, lesion right so basically why will when will you suspect it when there is pain which is out of proportion to the fracture fretfulness disturbed sleep recurrence of swelling over the toes and fingers low grade fever is there okay a patch of blood over the cast so you can see blood over the cast so that means something is wrong within the plaster okay how will you prevent it so when you are uh, <clears throat> uh, there if there is a window you can examine the area through a window in the cast okay and you can dress a small the sore through the window exactly how we talked about open fracture right so there will be a window in this cast you can treat that uh, sore through this window right you can examine the sore through the window etc but i'm wondering would they have made this uh, window before itself occasionally a plaster has to be removed and reapplied okay So guys in this video we have looked at plaster of paris pop so basically you looked at the fracture and the phases of management and you saw even in open fractures you can use pop basically this is the plan for treatment of fractures in undisplaced uh, also you can use uh, immobilization uh, casts to immobilize okay in displaced fractures also you can use uh, for closed reduction you can use immobilization technique using cast even in open fractures you can still uh, use uh, if it is a small wound you can have a cast and you can treat the care the for the wound with from the hole okay window uh, then here they are talking about fresh fractures which will need this type of cast non operative methods of uh, immobilization so cast is not the way to only way to immobilize you have strapping sling cast immobilization and functional bracing here we are talking about cast immobilization which uses pop But pop has almost uh, uh, like they're saying fiber glass is more popular okay so let us write here on top that now fiber glass is more popular but still they are asking pop in the exam so what is uh, plaster of paris gypsum salt can you say gypsum salt gypsum salt gypsum salt yeah csu so for calcium sulfate with half water then you add water it will become two water exothermic reaction irreversible reaction it will take the shape on uh, drying setting time will vary okay some of the common plasters you have seen minerva cast uh, cervical spine riser cast for scoliosis turn buckle cast for scoliosis shoulder spica spica means you are uh, take cast where the limb and a part of the trunk are included humerus they are putting some u slab then coles cast for coles fracture hip spica for fracture of hema leg cylinder cast for fracture of patella tendon patella tendon bearing cast for fracture of tibia ptb types of plaster bandages you saw that there can be uh, cotton bandages which are impregnated with plastic powder something like this i feel the other ones are ready made bandages you will get okay then uh, plaster of paris uh, can be applied as a slab or a cast you saw slab means you will just unroll the bandage to and fro on a table and then you will use that uh, as a slab only to cover up circumference of the limb okay so basically it will immobilize uh, for soft tissue injuries you can use that or even to reinforce your for your cast itself to reinforce the plaster cast you can use a slab okay so slab uh, you understood there are two terminologies here slab and cast cast is applied for the whole of the circumference of the limb okay is it going too much is it too much no Okay, fundamental principles basically you immobilize the joints above and below the fracture. Three points here: immobilize the, the joints in functional position, pad the limbs adequately. Otherwise, what will happen if you if you don't pad? See, if you pad, you can protect uh, the uh, it from tight tight cast. You can protect it even from sores. Right? Padding is very important. But the exception uh, for this first two points is cold sore cast because there you are not. Uh, um uh, immobilizing the elbow and also the wrist is not immobilized in the functional position okay uh how do you care for the plaster if there's any crack you should be careful and if you notice uh, um it you should probably bring it to the notice of the care provider uh, avoid wetting the plaster graduated weight bearing for lower limb fractures suddenly don't go and lift all the weight 
don't wet the plaster also okay you should exercise the muscles which are in the plaster and you should move the joints which are not in the plaster okay okay yeah okay complications of plaster treatment you have impairment of circulation tight cast and plaster sores here uh, impairment of circulation that is tight cast guys you saw that uh, what are the symptoms stretch pain swelling over the fingers inability to move the fingers hypoesthesia bluish discoloration all this can um, this uh, impairment of circulation that is ischemia can lead to what gangrene disastrous it is adequately padding will protect all this and elevation of the limb also is very important for the first few days of putting the cast okay plaster sores we told you if there is some foreign body stuck inside or if there is some irregularity in the surface uh, in the inner surface it will keep rubbing against the normal um, uh, skin right the inner surface will keep rubbing against the inner uh, skin and it will cause a lesion if you have not given enough padding also it can happen that you will have a plaster sore okay so what will you do you will create a window and you will treat that sore that's it okay guys so they didn't tell how to remove this plaster of paris i think we should read that also look at how they are removing the cast guys yes so how long do they actually give all this uh, cast and all you know i uh, i have a feeling like around 6 weeks um, but they may extend usually they will say wear it for 10 days then they keep extending it so that the patient is uh, Uh, every 10 days he will go and he will think they'll remove it and they keep extending it for 10 days 10 days 10 days uh, for a month or a month and a half okay this is how they do it okay so that's it guys in this video you have learnt about plaster of paris okay bye 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 bye